Hey, this is Eb. I uh, wanted to show off this guitar I've been working on for a long time. It's mine. Uh, I've had it for a long time, and uh, but it's actually for sale. If you want to see more pictures and all that, those kind of details, there's more of that on Reverb, which is maybe how you got here also. But I'll tell you a little bit about it. I've got a friend who's a luthier, real good friend, and, and he said, I asked him if he had any projects. He says, I, I'm never going to work on this thing if you want it. Uh, you know, buy it for this much money. Uh, it's what it is. It's, uh, I believe, if I, if I recall correctly, it's a 1967 SG uh, Special. So the one that would have just had P90s in it. And somebody along the way had put some humbuckers in it. They had routed it out real big and ugly in there. And they had also routed it out for some kind of a tremolo system. So there was a big tremolo kind of route here. And then one for all the springs on the back and and you could see some screw holes it to the untrained eye or even mine it would look like there was some kind of headstock repair there wasn't there was some kind of you know locking nut system down here i never saw any of that i just saw the uh, what was left uh there were no original parts other than the body and the you know that, that was here there was no hardware no electronics nothing so um my goal was to get it back together and get it playable and uh make it look a lot more original um i like the refin i like the old black refin i think there's no point in trying to make this guitar look brand new again it's not going to be brand new uh, i don't know that it was worth that kind of extra work to make it look like a new guitar and then look old i think black's a cool color uh for a guitar that you're going to play rock and roll or anything on so i stuck with that and figured i would work with it um i plugged this uh, using some techniques, learned from old Dan early one, who was so helpful with all this information. This area, uh, there had been multiple uh, locations for, for, I guess, different systems they had put in and drilled out different ways. So, so this whole little area actually got a, uh, had to be refilled with one solid piece of mahogany. If you were to refill it, refinish it, it'd probably still look real pretty because it, it's a tight fitting mahogany. A chunk that covers up all those the ugly that was here it originally would have had a maestro system that would have been surface mount so none of those holes were original to the guitar um by talking to different friends like uh jeff catlin old redbeard sound and, and other people um about what they think would be more desirable something original or something that's more like the big sgs like the sg standards and whatnot and customs um and they said go ahead and just drill it out everybody wants this not the not that so uh put the tunematics in there these are what do you call those they're a tone pro tunematics um had to get a custom uh had to make a custom pick card for this thing since they routed the humbuckers and just a little bit off from where the originals ones were i didn't see the need to move them around when i could just move the pick up around uh so did that um some relic old knobs and uh, plenty of lifelets in the fret, new fingerboard. I don't need a new fingerboard, new nut down here, old new bone nut. I think it was missing the old, uh, uh, all of this stuff. So these are all new parts down here. But on the back, I had to do a giant block in here. There, it was, a, I mean, a big old tremolo route. And this, all this wear was already still here. If you can see it, all of this like pick. Uh, not pick buckle rash back here. So I decided to just go with it uh, Fill it in and so under this black is where you would see the lines I know eventually it's going to shrink and you're going to see some of it But in the meantime, I thought I uh, looked at a bunch of my guitars with buckle rash and this right here Now I'm a found mahogany that was really close to this mahogany. I'll put there's pictures online You can see the grain is really close and then just uh, Taped it off in a special way uh to match what I thought looked like some other stuff that could, that could hide on either sides of the line and taped it off and finished it and then scraped it all back and that kind of stuff. And so it's like an oversprayed, like a lot of these uh, old guitars are, they've been refinished several times, but it's about half original black and about half uh, new black and, and it'll start wearing in and looking really nice. But I was really pleased with that instead of trying to make it look brand, brand new again. I may... I don't know if I have time, I may take it down some more, but I'm fine with the overspray uh, on it. But it uh, has Duncan Distortions uh, in here, brand new. Has a CTS Correct Pots in it and Switchcraft Switch, all the stuff you'd expect uh, 
in one of these. Um, some, I think these are relic. I don't know if they're original uh, Gibson ones. I have to work on so many. But uh, I'll give you a little sample. I've just got an old com Gibson combo. It's these distortions, they want a whole lot more than what it's able to give, but you can hear the. sampler here show you it plays all the way up and down the neck. I'm just not a good lead player so keeps on going way up here. Anything funny you heard up there is my limited ability of playing past the first position, nothing to do with the neck. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's a bad of the bone player. Um, yeah, if you live close, come check it out. Uh,